Happy Halloween, Spookaroos! No, I didn't especially like Halloween Kills, but I still love Michael Myers, and this uh, is the 78 Michael Myers mask. But let me take this off so you can hear me better. Ugh. And of course, when we take off the mask, we gotta check the stash, but that's holding on pretty well. All right, Spookaroos. Now, listen, um, this is the Halloween special, and I'm videotaping this. And if you're a member of the Patreon, then you are seeing us. And if you're not a member of the Patreon, then you are just hearing this on the old podcast, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you decide that you would like to step up to the extra level and be able to see the video broadcast of the Spookaroos Halloween special, the first ever video and uh listen let's let's not expect expect too much all right this is the first ever for a reason you know i'm I'm just learning all this video editing stuff that i've been kind of doing along the way these past year almost two years in quarantine um but you know i hope to make more video content for you guys and uh we're starting here with this so here we go but for those of you who did not get to see uh my glorious visage at this very moment uh, i was wearing a michael myers mask so that's that's what that noise was, muffling my voice. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Halloween special. It's finally here, you guys. This is it. It's our time, and nobody can take that away from us. Of course, it's also a little bit of a sad time because it's almost over. Uh, so that's sad. But as you can tell by the sound of my voice, I might not quite sound like myself. My voice is worn out from yelling at tourists in which city? Salem, Massachusetts. That's how I spend most of my October. And I know some of you have met me in Salem. It's been such a treat to have people come up and say that they watch the YouTube videos or more often that they're familiar with the podcast. And I am so happy to hear that. It makes me so pleased every time I hear it. I'm sorry, folks. I'm in the middle of a storm here and stuff is blowing across my living room as I talk to you. So if I get a little distracted, it's because apparently there's a flash hurricane going by outside and uh, there's lots of traffic noise too and and wind and rain but we're gonna we're gonna power through for this halloween special because that's what we do so uh like i was saying if you want to join the patreon go to patreon.com slash witch and you can join there and uh of course spooky times is a witch finder production it's all under the same banner now all my work here on the podcast all my work on the youtube videos all my work on the streets of salem it's all witch finder productions so that's uh, how that all ties in. And uh, of course, if you want to listen to each and every episode, well, almost each and every episode, you can go to SpookyAS.com, and that's where you'll find all those episodes. And I'll show also links to the social media. Our brand new Instagram handle is at Spooky Times with Eric D. That works out really well because it matches the title of the show. Who would have thought that would be a good idea, right? So uh, I don't have many followers right now because not everyone has switched over. So I hope you guys will do that. And uh, let's get those numbers up because people are going to say, this guy's got over 200 episodes and he's only got 120 followers. Something's wrong here. This show must be terrible. And that's not true, I hope. So uh, let's get those numbers up. Okay, I got a lot of show planned for you, but we're going to take it a little bit. We're going to take it a little bit casual, a little bit easy. That's why, you know, I'm not wearing the coveralls. I was a very casual 1978 Michael Myers, uh, un untouched from Trick or Treat Studios. I, I do like it better with like, you know, the little touch-ups that people do. And maybe I'll get around to it. But, uh, you know, I, I, this is casual. We're a casual party, come as you are. Um, although, you know, costumes appreciated. And um, we're just gonna talk about some of our favorite Halloween things. And I also uh, asked a couple of celebrities to drop by. So uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from a couple familiar faces and famous names as we go along here. And, uh, oh, oh, hold on, look at this. Speak of the devil, my phone rings and look who it is. This is, oh boy, you're gonna, you're gonna like this one. Check this out, Spookaroos. Hey there, Spookaroos. This is Zach Galligan from Gremlins Waxwork. And Eric has asked me to answer a question for you guys, which is, what is my all-time favorite horror movie? Now, that is a very difficult question to answer because um, there's so many good ones. But I would probably say, if I had to pick one, I would pick John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. It's just a perfect movie. 
Kurt Russell is amazing. Robotine's effects are incredible. The whole cast is good. The script is extremely smart. Uh, the, the, the story unfolds in a real slow burn and has one of the great endings of all time and your fantastic Ennio Marconi score to boot. So there you go. I would definitely say John Carpenter's The Thing is my favorite horror movie. All right, The Thing. Yeah, that's a great one. I actually just saw that one for the first time relatively recently, and that's one that not just Zach, but a lot of people have been telling me is is a great one that we got to watch. And uh, I finally got around to it, and I agree that it is great, and I also agree that the ending is really cool. And uh, if you want my opinion, uh, yes, he totally is. I'll just say that. The other guy totally is. Um, you know what I forgot to ask, Zach? I, I, you know, uh, I wonder sometimes what people's favorite Halloween costumes were as a child. I've talked about my past Halloweens many times on the show, and I think I've even mentioned before that as a little kid, my favorite Halloween costume was a werewolf, and I was a werewolf at least two years in a row, and maybe even more than that. And it's a little strange maybe then that I haven't done a werewolf as an adult, but uh, maybe I'll get around to it, maybe sometime. And um, also, I'm almost certain I did mention this on the show, but uh, uh, one of the Halloween costumes that sticks out in my mind is when I was in middle school and I was the Phantom of the Opera for a CCD Halloween party. And uh, I did a I did a really elaborate special effects makeup with those little kits you used to be able to buy. I'm sure if I had pictures, which I don't, unfortunately, I'm sure if I had pictures, it probably didn't look that great. But in my mind and at the time, we thought it was amazing. And I wore it to the CCD party. And uh, one of the most beautiful girls in my grade came up to me. And she, uh, you know, I had the phantom mask, but then I'd take it off. And underneath, I'd have my, like, you know, janky face. And uh, she came up to me and she was like, can I, can I touch it? And I was like, yeah, you can touch it. And I don't, I'm, I meant my face. Let's not, I'm not being gross. That was not, that was not intentionally gross. But I still dress up even as an adult. Of course, I dress up in Salem all the time as the witch finder. It was a big predicament for me this year because, you know, Halloween's on a weekend this year. And I'm a weekend warrior there in Salem. So I said, well, do I go on Halloween day? Do I go as the witch finder? Or do I go in a Halloween costume? Maybe one that I could probably even make more money in because not everyone understands what the witch finder is right away. And uh, it might just be easier to be a very recognizable character that people might just want to come up and take a picture with. And I, then I wouldn't even have to really talk and all that kind of stuff. And I was thinking like, oh, maybe I could be um, Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corpses because I've been him before. And uh, that would be a fairly easy costume to throw together. And I think people would enjoy it. And I, you know, I, I don't have the full beard right now, but I could glue some some crepe paper on and do a passable job. Um, and I had some other ideas in mind, but I asked around. I asked my friends in Salem. I asked my family here. I asked friends around and they all said, no, we, we want the, the witch finder to be in Salem on Halloween. People are going to want that. I don't know how, I don't think there's going to be an angry mob demanding the witch finder if I don't show up as the witch finder, but I appreciate, uh, that people <laughs> want me to feel that way. So the witch finder will be there in Salem on Halloween this year, uh, on, on a Sunday. So that's going to be a crazy fun party. And oh, there it is again. There goes my, uh, my phone here. Let's see who it is. Oh, this is someone we know. A man discussed on our spooky wrestlers episode. Mr. Papa Shango himself. Hey, what's going on, Spookaroos? WWE Hall of Famer Papa Shango here. And my favorite Halloween costume as a kid wasn't one you could buy, but I would uh, make it. And uh, it was Blackula. And Blackula, Blackula, if you don't know, was the Black Dracula. And uh, my favorite scary movie. Man, I used to love the... The Freddy Krueger movies, man, all those, all those were, all of those were my favorite back in the day. Well, you can't go wrong with the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Um, I like the third one the best, as I've talked about on the show before. I am a sucker for the third part of any franchise. I don't know about any franchise, but of a lot of franchises, including Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 is very popular. That's Dream Warriors. 
Um, and a lot of people like that one, and a lot of people would probably even say that it's their favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I think I'm in the minority when I say that I love Friday the 13th Part 3. And I understand, because there's not a lot to it. It's, you know, a very basic story, but it is when Jason gets his hockey... Ho Why can't I talk? It is when Jason gets his hockey mask, and uh, of course you got Shelly, which is one of the best, worst characters in all of horror movies. Um, and to me, yes, it's basic, but that's what I like about it. That's It's a basic Friday the 13th story before it got too, you know, uh, involved in plot lines and all that kind of stuff that just get gets in the way of those kind of movies. As I talked about in the Halloween Kills episode, that's what separates uh, Michael Myers from a Jason. And the Jason movies are made to be that way. Michael Myers is made to be that way now, but he shouldn't be, is my point. Um, and he's been made that way for a very long time. It's not just these new movies that tried to make Michael Myers into, you know, Michael Voorhees. Um, but the Friday the 13th movies, there's a purity about them. And I think part three is one of the best ones because you still get Jason in his hockey mask and uh, you still get the basic outline of kids at camp getting murdered by a guy wearing a hockey mask. And uh, it's just, it's a light, fun uh, slasher movie as those kinds of things go. I like other parts too. I mean, I will not say that it's the best, like, movie. It's just my, one of my favorite of the Friday the 13th movies. If you're talking like plot line, storyline, then yeah, probably part four is the best, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess. Is that the final Friday? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm not saying it's the best, but uh, it is my favorite, and I recommend part three. And there's a very loud train going by, and I wonder if you can hear it. I, and Blackula, I've got to confess, I've never actually seen Blackula the whole way through, and I feel like that is something I need to remedy this year. But I'm going to do it because Papa Shango told me to, and I would not disappoint the Dark Lord of Voodoo. <laughs> now when it comes to october and spooky season that makes me think of conventions because there are lots of horror conventions here in the northeast anyway and i'm sure it's true everywhere else in the united states uh, at this time of year there used to be a great one in worcester massachusetts that i used to go to called rock and shock horror convention but that closed down a couple years back, so that one's gone. But we still have um, Chiller Theater in New Jersey, which I go to. And I know there's another big one uh, in New Jersey around this time of year that I haven't made it to yet. And uh, also in uh, Framingham, usually Massachusetts, um, there's one called Super Mega Fest, which is not a horror per se, but they will occasionally have horror guests. And uh, I know I've done a whole episode about horror conventions and my rules and recommendations for horror conventions. But I thought I would go through my autograph collections and uh, show you some pictures that have a little bit of a story attached to them and uh, just share with you some of those insights. So why don't we go ahead and do that now? I still go to these conventions, but now I usually get like maybe two or three autographs a year. And otherwise, I'm just kind of going there to check out the vendors and just just see what's what's popping, you know. Um, it's not like it used to be in the old days. In the old days, I would go and I would get like 10 people. Things were much cheaper back then. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really cool to meet like old celebrities. Like I'm looking at the top of my pile here and let's take a look at this one. This is, uh, Ben Chapman and Julie Adams from Creature from the Black Lagoon. And as you can see, it's double signed. And, uh, 2003. Oh, I'm aging myself but that was a long time ago that was almost 20 years ago now uh 42503 it says here for mr chapman um now ben chapman of course played the gill man when he was outside of the water so this has been in this suit here and rico browning played him when he was in the water and i also have a poster signed by rico browning but i, I wanted to bring up this picture for two reasons a because both of these people were at the chiller convention uh in this time and well this was a spring show they they used to do three shows a year now i think they're just down to two they have a fall and a spring show but they used to have a fall a, what they call the dead of winter show and then a spring show as well um so this was from a from a, actually from a spring show 
But this is a good example of the kind of things that pop up with these celebrities because Ben Chapman has passed away and Julie Adams has now passed away too. Um, but Ben Chapman has passed away, but he had a little bit of a feud with Rico Browning, who's still with us, hanging in there, um, the underwater gill man, because uh, apparently he was he would get upset that Rico Browning would sometimes sign, you know, this kind of picture. And he would sign, you know, Rico Browning. And Ben Chapman said, well, now you're taking credit for my work and you're signing pictures that are pictures of me. Those aren't pictures of you. Those are pictures of me. Um, and that, like, he, I remember he had a website and he talked all about this big controversy and all that stuff. Um, and, uh, and it was a big deal for them. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Chapman thought he was losing money on this or that people were confused about who the Gill Man was or whatever. Me, um, I would not object to having Rico Browning sign this as well, because then you have both Gill Man. And to me, this is the character. This isn't Ben Chapman. This is the character. Mr. Chapman probably would disagree with that statement. And, you know, but, um, hey, it is what it is. Uh, I think it's fine, but I do understand his point. If people think that there is only one Gill Man and then they say, oh, I got the Gill Man signature. No, you, there is two Gill Men. So if you want the complete Gill Man collection, you need the two signatures. So I only have one on this photo, um, but I do have another poster with Rico Browning. And that reminds me of another incident, which I also have pictures to show from. Of course, I won't go into great detail on this. Most of you have heard my story, if you're a longtime listener, about Linda Blair and how she wouldn't sign one of my posters because it was already signed by this lady, Eileen Dietz. Uh, this is not a picture from uh, The Exorcist. This is a picture from Helter Skelter, the original TV movie. Um, but uh, Eileen played Captain Howdy and, you know, sometimes Reagan when she was possessed and, you know, whatever. And... She's got a, she has a big problem with her and it was a big feud. She wouldn't sign my poster. Then I mentioned it to this lady and she was like, well, let me post about it on my website. And I was like, I don't want to get involved in all this stuff. Um, so these are just the kinds of things that can happen at conventions. Um, so those are some of my, some of my autograph stories. And again, it's just something that I look forward to every fall, even though it's getting rather expensive and it's not quite as fun as it used to be in that sense. And sometimes the conventions get a little crowded, like especially the Chiller Theater one. Uh, it gets really crowded and it can be really crazy and sometimes it's very stressful. But uh, still, it's just such a tradition for me now. I've been going since the early 2000s. So we're 20 years about, give or take. And uh, yeah, so I, to, to me, that's part of the Halloween. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We're getting another phone call here. Who's this? Let's see. We have, oh, someone we've heard from before, Spookaroos. Teen Witch herself, Robin Lively. Oh, what's up, guys? It's Robin Lively here. How are all of you Spookaroos doing? <laughs> hey, so Eric D wanted me to share with you guys um, my favorite Halloween costume. I have a couple. Um, I really loved being Miss Hannigan from Annie, because that's one of my favorite movies. Loved it. And I also loved it when my family and I were the cast of um, Stranger Things. <laughs> that was a blast. Well, those are some great choices for Halloween costumes. I would like to see the uh, Stranger Things photos. I wish he had sent some photos along, but oh well, I guess, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of her to take some time to speak with us. And we're all curious about this upcoming season of Karate Kid because we know some elements from Karate Kid Part 3. I, I, I shouldn't say Karate Kid, because of course the show is not called Karate Kid. The show is called Cobra Kai. We have we know that some elements from Karate Kid Part 3 are going to show up in Cobra Kai. So the question on every uh, original Cobra Kid franchise fan's mind and uh, Cobra Kai fan's mind is, is Robin Lively going to return? Something weird, I always thought about that movie, she, like, flat tells Daniel, like, hey, we're not going to be dating. Like, we're just going to be friends. And I just thought that was weird because he, like, wasn't with anybody. But I guess they figured, like, well, he had a girlfriend in the first movie and they didn't end up together. Then he, like, goes uh, to Japan uh, or Okinawa and he gets this, you know, other girlfriend. And then they're not together. So I guess maybe they just didn't want to give him another girlfriend because the movies are supposed to take place, even though they were made several years apart, they're supposed to take place like within the same 
calendar year or so. So, uh, yeah, so I guess maybe that's what they were thinking. But we'll see if she turns up in the newest season of Cobra Kai when it comes out. Of course, another thing that I think about when I think of Halloween is Halloween candy. Uh, I am an older man now with health issues, including diabetes, so I can't enjoy as much Halloween candy as I used to, although I do still sneak a little bit. Don't tell my doctor. Um, but what were the Halloween candies that I loved? What were the Halloween candies that you loved? Well, unfortunately, it's kind of a one-way conversation here, but I'll tell you what I loved. Uh, anything chocolate was my go-to. And of course, usually you got the fun size, but you always had one or two neighbors, if you were lucky, that gave out full-size bars. I didn't have any houses in my block. Sorry, a cat just jumped on my lap with her claws out. Get down, you. Ow, that hurt. Uh, I would love for her to say hello to you people, but not the way she just tried. Uh, yeah, so I didn't have any houses on my block that gave away full-size bars like on the reg. Except I had this one lady who was like my direct next door neighbor and she would save some full size bars for me and my neighbor Kim because we were like her, you know, neighbors. <laughs> but like we used to visit her a lot and uh, hang out with her a lot. And so Barbara would always put aside some full size bars for us and everyone else got the fun size. So that always helped and made us feel a little bit special. And uh, we enjoyed that. But yes, chocolate was king when I was a kid. Anything fun size, regular size chocolate. Of course, my absolute favorite Halloween candy of all time. And one of my favorite candies of all time is a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I don't think I'm alone in that. I bet a lot of you out there are saying the same thing. But I also enjoyed Snickers. That was a big hit with me. Uh, any kind of chocolate except for Almond Joy and uh, what's the other one? Mounds. Um, I, cause I didn't care for the coconut in it and they always said, you know, sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. And I said, well, they both have coconut and I don't like coconut. So it didn't matter whether I felt like a nut or not because there was nut in it and it was coconut and I did not like it. Um, so I'd always trade those away. Uh, as for the hard candies, I was never too crazy about most of them, but, uh, you know, I know a lot of people complain about the dum dum lollipops, but I was okay with those. Like, yeah, they're small, but you know, I was okay with those. I think the best value for your money, as far as a hard candy goes, is nerds. Because you get a lot in those little packs, and that you don't, you know, you don't need to eat a lot to get a big reaction out of them. They're very, very sweet, because they're, like, made of pure sugar. Um, so, the, I always liked nerds, uh, and it was just a fun name, colorful boxes, good times. Good Nerds are a good time. And uh, let's see, what else? Atomic Warheads I liked. Uh, not so crazy about uh, fireballs, but uh, they were all right. You know, I, I could I could mess with those. So I don't know, what do you got? Oh, you know what I really liked? Are those candies that came in like a coffin. I think it was called Mr. Bones. And, uh, and they like, you know, they came in like a little sh coffin shaped container and you pop it open and there were like bone shaped candies. You could make a little skeleton out of it. I love those things. Um, wax vampire teeth were not really a candy, but sometimes you'd get them when you were trick-or-treating. I love those things too. So those are some of my top favorite trick-or-treat candies. And I really think uh, chocolate was, oh, hold on, hold on here. Hold on, we got another phone call coming in. Oh, this is a big one, you guys. We got any Rocky Horror fans out here? Then I think you're gonna enjoy our next caller. Caller, say hello to the Spookaroos. Spookaroos, how are you? Nell Campbell here, down under, in lockdown. That's the very one, Nell Campbell, Rocky Horror Picture Show, Columbia. Let us do the time warp again. Let us do it. Now, I was walking down the street just to have a thing when a snick of a guy gave me an evil wink. The very one, treasures. Eric D has asked me what my favorite scary movie is. Oh my God, I so, I usually don't have a favorite anything. I, I have a favorite child because I only got one. That's the only way I can answer that. My favorite film is a Dutch film. Now, it was originally called The Golden Egg and then they changed the title to The Vanishing. 
And then the Americans did what they do with brilliant European films. They decide to make their own version and do it really badly. So what I suggest you do is you have got to get hold of the original, I think it was 1988 it was made, the original film of The Vanishing, the Dutch version. In my life, I would say of all the films I've seen, that is the film that Alfred Hitchcock would have liked to have made. And what I love about it is, and this becomes apparent quite early on, is that it is both the victim's and the murderer's POV, POV point of view. Oh, my God. I, I remember that I saw it with, with two friends in the cinema and, oh, I remember coming out. It was just so scary. I've had to warn my daughter about, well, about people that try, approach you and do what the murderer in that film. Oh, my God, it's just so beyond. In fact, I must watch it again. I, I wonder if I can get that on Apple TV. So that is the movie that I just adore. Um, I'm absolutely not into blood and gore. I like psychological thrillers. I'm also obsessed by true crime. And I confess that while I was getting this look together, my Edith Sitwell look for you, I was listening to a podcast called Serial Killers. Oh, my God, I was listening to this maniac. I can't believe when one comes up that I've never heard of. This one's called the, the I-5 Killer. Is it called? His name starts with an R. Anyway, he's so ghastly, I can't believe it. So, yes, and I mean, so I don't actually do horror. I do Rocky Horror, but I do thrillers and I do true crime. And what I love most, and this goes back to also why The Vanishing is my favourite, it's the psychological situation in the head of the criminal. There's that. And then I love watching how the police and detectives track the person down. So oh, I, so I, lo I watch lots of those, you know, true crime shows that are so popular. I watch a lot of them on YouTube now. I mean, the, the English had a great one called Crime Watch um, when they would get audiences to try and help them track killers, which they often did. Of course, DNA has helped so much, as have mobile phones, being able to ping off towers and locate people and CCTV. Well, between those three things, it's made life a lot easier. Um, anyway, so there's that. Now, let me see if you want... No, oh, happy Halloween, by the way. I miss New York Halloween. It was so fabulous. The Aussies don't really get it, darling. But then again, I don't know where you are. So if you're in Australia, apologies about that. But maybe you're in America where they really get it. And it doesn't always have to be spooky. It just needs to be a brilliant costume. My favourite costume ever that I saw sort of seven-year-old child dressed as a toothbrush in Washington Square. It was incredible. Now, let me have a look here. Well, I've told you about my favourite scary movie. I wish I could think of other scary movies. Well, I, another one that I loved, I love movies on a train. So, um, uh, Strangers on a Train. I preferred the book to the film, Patricia Hyersmith. Um, and I thought the men were miscast in a certain way. I don't know why. I, maybe I just didn't like one of them. Was it Robert Taylor? I can't remember. Anyway, um, hold on. Another, uh, yes. Oh, I know what I love. Uh, Dilemma for Murder. That's an early Hitchcock. Grace Kelly, black and white. I love it when it's sort of a subtle scenario. I mean, I, I wish we were all—I wish we were all talking to each other so we could exchange what films you love. You can always text me. You can text me back on this and let me know which ones are your favourite scary films. Um, anyway, so have a great, great Halloween. And oh, I'll tell you something I loved on Halloween when I lived in Brooklyn. I was taking Tilly round. She was a, a you know a wee thing. We were trick or treating. 
and somebody had set up that they were peeping from their window in the basement apartment, but we couldn't see them, but they could see us. And they they had a microphone, I think the microphone, they would have had a microphone, but the speaker was inside their trash can. So you would be looking at, at whatever, uh, Halloween, you know, decorations they had. And then they, the, suddenly they'd go, so little girl dressed as a rabbit, you know. And then they'd start saying all these absolutely terrifying things, but you couldn't see them, but they could see you. And it was so spooky. It was very clever. All right, darlings, onward and upward. It's lovely to meet you. How come you called the Spookaroos? It's the greatest name. Okay, treasures. Mwah! Goodbye. And don't forget to let me know who, you know, which films are your favorite scary movies and why. Okay. Mwah. Bye. Now, obviously people, uh, these people aren't really calling me. I hate to break the illusion, but I'm sure I'm not insulting your intelligence. You know that these are cameos that I have paid for and asked these celebrities to answer these questions so they could be a part of our big Halloween spectacular here. And uh, I am very impressed with Nell. First of all, she just uh, shared a lot. And uh, what the interesting thing to me about that is I met Nell Campbell in person and not to say that she was nasty to me because she absolutely was not, but it was just kind of a standard thing. Like I went up, I paid my money, she signed my album and that was that, that was the end of it. And so uh, I was surprised that she had so much to say on this cameo call, but I guess uh, we asked a question that really struck a chord with her. And I had never seen the movie she talked about, but it was available on Amazon uh, for rental. So I rented it and it is a very good movie. It is definitely more of a thriller than a horror movie. Um, but, and I don't, I don't know how scary everyone will find it, but I think that definitely, especially if you're a female, it'll probably affect you more than perhaps it affected me, but I still found it very interesting. Um, and I think that it's definitely 100% worth a watch. And I do recommend that version. It, you can get the subtitles on Amazon. And uh, they there is, as she said, an American version, which I've also never seen, but apparently she says it's no good. So why watch it? The other thing she mentioned there, she talked about the spooky neighbors. I think I've talked about that on, um, the podcast before I know that I have I had a neighbor that used to wear a, a witch hat and he would hide behind the door and he would jump out at you and I also had another one that would wear one of those I forget exactly what they're called or how it's pronounced but the Gungorian guards from Star Wars like like kind of like bulldog faced green guys um, that you could find in Jabba's palace and on his skiff uh, he would come out and just wear that mask and he wouldn't jump out he would just come out very slowly and hold the candy dish down and you take a candy and then you take it back. So he was just trying to scare you just with the mask alone. He wasn't, he, would, he didn't, wasn't doing anything extra. He wasn't trying to get you or anything like that. So those were my spooky neighbors. But I love that call from Nell. And I really felt like that was just like we were, like she was just sitting across from us having a conversation. So that's lovely. Nell Campbell, thank you for that. And uh, we'll have to try to find a way to get back to her and tell her all about our favorite movies. I am definitely losing my voice, as you can hear. So, Tourist of Salem, I hope you're happy. You're affecting our Spookaroos Halloween special. But we will persevere. I'm going to clear my throat, and we'll be right back after this. All you ghouls and goblins gather round. Time for chills and thrills, so party down. No matter who you like to bite, you're going to want and Coors Light tonight. Coors Light beer will be there. Fun is everywhere. Get ready for excitement when Coors is on the scene. Because anything can happen. <laughs> on a Coors and Coors Light Halloween. Okay, we are back. My voice is still going, but I'm gonna. We're, we're getting towards the end here, so I, I think I can do this. Now, we've been talking about favorite movies with, with some of our celebrities from some of our favorite movies. But what are some of my favorite movies? Well, I've mentioned many of them before on the show, but as far as horror goes, my number one of all time is still The Exorcist, and I know that that's a very basic answer, but I love The Exorcist. Maybe it's because I grew up Catholic, 
and I 100% believe that all that stuff could happen. Um, maybe it's because of the story I've told before about renting it with my high school girlfriend and bringing it back to her place and her mother wouldn't even allow us to bring the rented video into the house, let alone watch it. And we thought she was joking. She was not joking. We had to go back to my house and watch it, but we did. Um, and it, I just love that movie. I do think it's still a scary movie. I mean, it doesn't like make me jump or anything like that, but still like just the idea of like, could this actually happen? And of course my answer now, in my mind now, and uh, my spirituality, I say with quotation marks, um, the answer is no, I don't believe that it could happen. But, uh, you know, just thinking about, well, what if, what if this was true? Like how terrifying would this be? And even with my problems with Linda Blair, I still love The Exorcist. So that's my number one movie. But other movies that I love, listen, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. So a lot of my choices reflect that. I love Children of the Corn, which I've done a whole episode about. So I also won't spend too much time talking about that. I love uh, American Werewolf in London. Did a whole episode about it. So you don't need to hear me talk about that. I love um, Lost Boys. I think I did an episode about that. I'm almost certain I did. And you don't need to hear me talk about that. I also love Sunset Boulevard, which a lot of people don't consider a horror movie, but it totally, totally is. You know, it. first of all, it opens with a murder, and then the whole movie is about that murder basically happening, and Norman Desmond is a horror movie villain, 100%. For those of you not watching on the video, I'm doing Norma Desmond faces, and she is terrifying, and uh, yes, that is a horror movie, and if you haven't seen it yet, definitely, definitely watch Sunset Boulevard. Um, it's, you know, a classic. It's a classic. That's all there is to say about it. Did I say The Bad Seed already? I love that one too. I'm trying to think of older movies that I love. Um, the ones I talked about with Christoph Jensen, uh, when we talked about uh, lockdown movies that we could watch, The Haunting was a great one. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting another phone call here, and this one might be a little controversial after my last episode, but uh, how I might feel about the movie has nothing to do with how I might feel about the man. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take this call from James Jude Courtney, star of the new Halloween movies, Michael Myers himself, here to celebrate Halloween with us, James Jude. Yo, giving a big shout out to the Spookaroos for your Halloween party. How awesome is that? You guys getting together to celebrate Halloween. Um, I'll tell you what, guys, uh, th this movie, I'm going to see the premiere on the 12th. I've already seen the film, um, and it's brutal. Um, I hope you guys agree. We worked our butts off on it. It took me a couple months to recover from the, from the bumps and bruises. Um, my favorite Halloween horror movie, hmm, that would be Frankenstein, the original, um, the Boris Karloff film. I'm a huge fan of the original, um, universal horror films, um, my favorite costume as a kid, um, I, 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 I'm a sucker for a pirate co uh, costume. Um, and I mean, kind of the Captain Morgan type dashing, you know, Errol Flynn sort of Captain Blood costume. Um, and Halloween, uh, you know, it depends, man. It depends where we are. Uh, last Halloween, I was um, making a movie called Halloween Kills. <laughs> so... Um, Listen, guys, all I have to say about Jamie Lee Curtis is she is kind, intelligent. She's a poster child for an empowered woman. And um, it, it is a distinct honor to work with her and to know her and to have her uh, as a friend. Y'all, I hope you have an amazing Halloween. I hope you enjoy the movie. We worked really, really hard on it to make it what it is. Um, and then we have Halloween Ends coming up. We're shooting that in January. So if my friend here, my alter ego, the, the hero mask that I wore... Uh, in Halloween 2018. If he could speak, I'm sure he'd wish you that for you as well. And there's the stump. <laughs> there's my uh, prosthetic hand that I wore. Um, happy Halloween, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Well, can you beat that, ladies and gentlemen? He's a, he's a, he's a monster kid, first of all. He loves the Universal Monster movies, like most of us do. And, uh, oh, I should have mentioned those, too. I always forget to mention those, because I just feel like Everybody who wants to see him has seen him, but there's a whole new generation of young people who grew up and maybe they didn't grow up with those movies being on TV like they were even when I was a kid on the sci-fi channel on the uh, Moonlight Matinee. Um, and I loved watching those movies. I used to see him a little bit before that too on VHS and stuff like that. 
So I don't know, maybe you young people haven't seen the classic Universal monster movies and you know, they are not terrifying as they might have been back in the day when people weren't used to seeing monsters in, in movies. Um, but they are enjoyable in their own right, so I hope you'll give those a chance. Listen, me and Michael Myers himself are recommending them to you. But uh, also, how cool is it just to get a happy Halloween from Michael Myers himself? Uh, so that was very cool. So James, Jude, Courtney, listen, man. I might not be the biggest fan of the Halloween movies that are coming out now, but again, that's got nothing to do with you. I think you're doing a great job. And uh, listen, I'm just glad that we were all here together. Spookaroos, you hear the celebrities love that we get together. I'm so happy we could be together. And I'm glad that I had the chance to do this video and audio version of this Halloween special this year. My voice is just about run out, as you can hear. So that is going to have to do it for this year's Halloween special. And I hope you guys all had a good time. I hope you have a wonderful and fulfilling Halloween. I hope you have some good costumes. I hope you will send me your pictures, show me your pictures through the website, through the Patreon, through the Instagram. Website is spookyas.com. Instagram is at spooky times with Eric D. And of course you can join the Patreon at patreon.com slash witchfinder. And of course we still have Facebook too, so you can go to facebook.com slash spooky times with Eric D. Join the Spookaroos, post your Halloween pictures there, share your thoughts about this. And I would love to hear what you think of this Halloween special. Should I continue offering occasional video versions of episodes or would you prefer I stick to just the audio? Uh, so just let me know, let me know what's up. Tell me about your Halloween. And until next time, happy Halloween, and don't be afraid! <laughs>